This is the story of Air Europa Flight 911. On the 20th of October 2007, an Air Europa flight was on a charter flight from Katowice in Poland to Beirut in Lebanon. The flight was to go from Katowice and then come back. So they were supposed to leave on the 27th and return on the 28th. Since this was a long flight, the plane had three pilots on board, with the third pilot taking up the jump seat and the cockpit. The takeoff from Beirut was all but normal, and the flight was boring. By the time the 737 was in Bratislava FIR, or the Flight Information Region, the crew got their first weather report for Katowice. It was in perfect, just 400 meters of visibility, and they had low clouds. It wasn't good weather, but the captain remarked that it would be just enough to get the plane on the ground. With the weather on his mind, the captain prepped the plane for landing, and Warsaw ATC let the plane descend down to 10,000 feet. They then were allowed to descend even lower, and the captain got some bad news. The visibility had deteriorated to 300 meters or just 900 feet. This was still within the allowable limit, but they'd be cutting it very, very close to the edge. As the plane got closer to the runway, the pilots got even more weather reports, to which the captain would say, well, that's a bit difficult, isn't it? Yes, Mr. Captain, it would be a bit difficult. As the plane leveled off at 4,000 feet, the jet was passing over the Kilo Tango Charlie VOR, or a very important navigational beacon near Katowice. The first officer knew that the weather would be horrible, so he suggested that they fly the approach by the book so that they would have a higher margin of error. But the captain wanted to do a straightened approach, which would get the plane on the ground faster and it would save fuel, thus saving the airline money. 6.4 nautical miles from the runway, the 737 was lined up with the runway, the plane was configured for landing, the flaps were out, the gear was out, all of that stuff. Except for one tiny little thing. The plane was way too high to make a safe landing. For those of you that want the nitty gritty details, the deviation was 5.62 dot. But this meant that the pilots would have to lose a lot of altitude very, very fast. Now, the ideal thing to do right now would be to go around and try again. But if you've watched this channel for a while, then you know that that's not what the pilots did. They made some bad mistakes. At this point, the pilots did not have the runway in sight and asked for the runway lights to be set to maximum brightness. Then, for the next 12 seconds, the captain and the first officer were both telling each other that they were too high. But neither pilot really did anything about it. Then, as the pilots changed the autopilot mode, the captain urged the first officer to descend. He kept saying, go downwards, go downwards. But they were having a bit of trouble wrestling the plane to get down to the height that they wanted to get it to. As the jet lost altitude, the autopilot started shouting, approaching minimums. The captain was telling his first officer to, quote, keep that slope. You remember that approaching minimums call out that they got? Well, that one then changed to a sink rate warning, letting the pilots know that they were way too low and that they needed to arrest their descent. But their altitude just kept dropping. Then the pilot saw the runway, and the captain said, in sight. Just as the runway came into view, the first officer, for some reason, handed the plane off to the captain by saying, your controls. This cockpit was in chaos. The plane, as a result, was in chaos as well. They were just 50 feet off the ground, and they were descending at about 1,200 feet per minute. Since they were just 50 feet off the ground, there's not a whole lot of things that they could have done. The plane had dropped so much that the runway was no longer right in front of them. It was still a few miles out. Then, a loud bang was heard as the plane started striking stuff on the ground. The captain just said, oh my god, and then the plane touched down, well, well short of the runway, and the throttles were advanced to max power. But now the plane thinks that the pilots were trying to take off without prepping the plane for takeoff. This gave them a takeoff configuration warning. The plane then lifted off again, and as soon as it did, the pilots got a stick shaker warning, letting them know that the plane was close to a stall. Then the plane touched down again. The plane touched down two more times, and the pilots then decided to keep it on the ground. They had basically touched down the 737 in a field. All the while the plane was on the ground, it was mowing down everything from approach lights to other runway infrastructure, and a little bit of trees. The wings and engines of the plane were shredded, but the landing roll was so long that they eventually got on the runway, and then they were just taxiing like nothing had gone wrong. The captain was like, 
We should say something to the tower because we may have a few lights broken. The instructor responded with, it must be a lot of lights broken and other things. I don't know why, but I find that really, really funny for some reason. And after all of this, they decided to not tell ATC about what had happened. I genuinely don't know why they didn't just tell ATC what had happened. Did they really think that airport authorities wouldn't be able to piece together what had happened? Like, you have a bunch of lights and stuff that is broken, and you have a plane at the stand that looks like it's been through a combine. It's not very hard to deduce what had happened. In this case, the plane had landed about 840 meters, or about 3,000 feet short of the threshold of the runway. Now, you have to remember, you don't land at the threshold of the runway. You land a bit down the runway, at the touchdown zone. So with the help of some maps, I was able to ascertain that the plane actually touched down about a mile from where it should have landed. These pilots somehow landed a fully loaded 737 a mile short of the runway, and then proceeded with the landing. That is just something else. Now, for the big question. How does one accidentally land a 737 in a field that is about a mile from where you're supposed to land it? Well, looking into the cockpit voice recorder of the plane, they started to get an idea of what was happening in the cockpit or right before the landing. They heard the captain talking about the landing, briefing everyone on what needed to be done. But then they listened for the landing checklist. It was never done. This crew was skipping out on very simple, easy to do things. For example, the controller had asked the crew to let the controller know when they were getting near the KTC VOR. But they never did that. The pilots also never adhered to the published approach, which would have set the plane up for the landing in a much more safe way. You can kind of see why the captain went in with a straight in approach instead of the published approach. The captain wanted to save fuel. It's called straight in for a reason. The interesting thing is that ATC was never told about the pilots doing a straight in approach. So these pilots are just doing things their way. On their way down to the runway, the crew got a weather report. It said that visibility had dropped down to 500 meters at the start of the runway. Now, this was well below minima. Legally, at this point, the pilots had to go around or divert to an alternate with better weather. This landing should not have happened, but the pilots decided to press on with it anyway. But why do you think the crew needlessly put hundreds of lives at risk by landing on a runway that they should not have been landing at? Well, again, it came down to fuel. The captain was worried about fuel consumption, and therefore he decided to land on the runway. Now, during a normal landing, you come up on the glide slope from below, intercept it, and then follow it down all the way to the runway. But these pilots were trying to intercept the glide slope from above. Now, that's a lot more difficult to do because you have to manage your airspeed a lot better than an intercept from below. But this crew messed that up. They were descending way faster than they should have all the way down to the runway. So, at one point, they got on the glide slope and they went right through it falling below it, but no one caught on to what was happening. They were all staring into the fog, waiting for the runway to show up out of nowhere. But unknown to them, their plane was falling further and further away from where they thought it was. But it's not like they had no idea what was happening to their plane. Their plane was making automated alerts about the state of the plane. The plane generated a few sync-ups and pull-up warnings, but those fell on deaf ears. The pilots in the cockpit never really pulled up. This plane had two captains on the flight deck, but surprisingly, none of them did anything about the situation that they were in. But here's what I don't get. In most cases, when you're about to hit the ground, you go full power and try to climb away. But in this case, the pilots let the 737 just roll along the ground for thousands of feet. Like, for example, look at the A320 that almost crashed into France recently. The plane was just six feet away from disaster, but the pilots managed to recover. These pilots were more or less like, well, we're down, might as well stay on the ground. That's just insane. If I may speculate for a bit, the reason for all of this, I think, was the takeoff configuration alarm. Basically, when the throttles were advanced, the plane thought that the pilots were trying to take off without configuring the plane. That may have been why the pilots decided to keep the plane on the ground. But you never know. Why do you think the pilots kept the plane on the ground? Let me know your thoughts in the comments below.
All of these things point to a crew that was not following the principles of CRM. These pilots were not working as a cohesive team. They were not letting the other know what the other was doing. Even when the first officer spoke up, the captain just disregarded him. But the one saving grace is that the plane touched down in an area that was relatively clear. This meant that there wasn't anything in the way of the plane that would damage it too much. Had this plane touched down a few meters earlier, then it definitely would have landed in a wooded area and it would have gone through a road. That would have been catastrophic. Thank God that did not happen. Thank you for watching this episode of Mini Air Crash Investigation. If you like the videos that I make, do consider liking and subscribing. It will really help the channel grow. I will catch you guys next time. Stay safe.